Hello everyone, this is Dino Chris from Prestar Facts, and this is Prestar Facts extra episode number 90, and I'll be talking about my favorite prehistoric reptiles. And so, I'll be going through some reptiles that I have liked uh, for a long time, since I was a kid, even some of the brands, even some ones that I actually uh, got to know uh, later on. Um, and just to uh, remind everyone, this is not a, this is not, there's no rankings in, in this list. Uh, so these are all kind of in no particular order. And, uh, some of these animals I will discuss, uh, furthermore in an act future extra episode, uh, like, you know, like say if I do need to do like a, like a revital or like revisit, uh, one that I have discussed about before, I can do that. And ba like, basically f like if there's new information that has come out and of course, um, yeah. And so, uh, we can actually have some fun with this. And so let's actually get started here. So one of my first, uh, reptiles that I like is a uh, Dismatosuchus, a type of the Archosaurian, uh, type of, uh, reptiles. Uh, I've always liked it because it's like it's got the it's got the spikes on the shoulders, that armor uh, on the back, and it's such a really interesting looking uh, um, herbivorous uh, reptile. And so, yeah, I always like this uh, uh, creature because of how like cool the spikes look on the shoulders, and just just an amazing looking creature. I just love it. Next one is Tylosaurus. So I did include marine reptiles in here. And uh, and uh, just to uh, uh, remind everyone, I did not put pterosaurs in here. Uh, pterosaurs are, are their own thing. And so, and so I actually decided to put marine reptiles, land reptiles, you know, those sorts of things uh, into this list. And so... Yeah, and so the first marine reptile on here is uh, Tylosaurus, a type of Mosasaur. Uh, I've always liked Tylosaurus because of just the sheer size of this thing, uh, over 40 feet in length and and just a huge skull, just that huge skull. I've always loved Mosasaurs because of like how cool their skulls are and especially the teeth, like not just in the jaws, but also in the roof of the mouth. I've always loved Mosasaurs because of just how sleek they look and and just how just the size of them just gives just gives just has me in awe every single time. It's just really really cool. There are smaller mosasaurs out there too, you know, like uh, like uh, the me small to medium sized one, Platycarpus. I've always liked that one too, but I didn't include it on this list. Uh, but Tylosaurus is my favorite mosasaur. Uh, the next reptile is Dallasaurus, so the one of the ancestors of Mosasaurs, and yeah, I I liked it because it's just like such a unique uh, type of uh, reptile, uh, type of lizard that was very streamlined, uh, has, still has that, still has the legs to be on land, you know, and is able to swim uh, in like the shallows of like say rivers. Uh, in the sea, and so like yeah, it's just so unique. It's such a unique uh, reptile, and and you can see it's that mosasaurs are closely related to monitor lizards and snakes, and so you could kind of see how it has that monitor lizard uh, like shape, and and like mo monitor lizards and snakes have a common ancestor, and so yeah, that actually showcases that these are closely related to monitor lizards and yeah it's a, such a cool looking reptile the next is probably one of my favorite uh monitor lizards of all time uh that is not the komodo dragon uh that is megalania or Varanus priscus and so yeah the giant monitor lizard from australia uh i always like this uh creature because of just the sheer size of this monitor lizard just huge monitor lizard and uh, yeah just the sheer size the skull just looks so cool even though there's not many skull pieces uh of the animal even though there's an educated guess of what the skull looks like and yeah and there's some vertebrae that have been found and some limb bones and ribs but not too much uh, of this animal has been found but 
yeah, I actually love this creature because it just it's just so unbelievable that there was a lizard that big uh, that roamed around Australia. And yeah, that's just, it's just such an amazing looking creature. Next is one of the largest snakes uh, to ever live, and that is Titanoboa. Uh, and so, yeah, just the sheer size alone, even though there's only been vertebrae that have been found of Titanoboa, and it's an educated guess of what um, the size of this uh, snake really is. And, yeah, it lived right after the age of dinosaurs, so right after the KPG extinction event. And, and yeah, just the sheer size alone is just really, really amazing and it's a constrictor and yeah just just how amazing a, that creature would have been to see in the water kind of like an anaconda uh just swimming around and finding prey uh just a, a cool cool snake the next is elasmosaurus uh the marine reptile the type of marine reptiles uh known as the plesiosaurs and I always like this one because of just how long that neck is. Because uh, I've always been fascinated by plesiosaurs when I was a kid uh, because of just like the long necks the, and like the four flippers and the short tail. Just just amazement of that. And I got to see an elasmosaurus skeleton uh, in like the uh, uh, geology museum in the School of Mines and Technology Museum. Uh, and also there's one that's hanging up on the hanging in uh, the Milwaukee County Museum or the Milwaukee Public Museum, excuse me, the Milwaukee Public Museum. And yeah, just just so cool. Just just an amazing plesiosaur and just the long neck. And also it's got and it's very famous, of course, uh, with uh, Edward Drinker Cope, who accidentally put the skull at the end of the tail because he thought the short part of the of the the short part of the animal was the was the neck and and the skull attached to the end, and he thought that the longer part was the tail, but it wasn't until uh, O. C. Marsh uh, found out that like nope, this is a mistake. The head sh the head should be on the long end, not the short end, and so yeah, yeah, and that kind of like started like this big hole. Uh, rivalry between O.C. Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, but yeah, just a, just so just an amazing looking plesiosaur. There's other plesiosaurs I like too, like the like plesiosaurus as well, and also Cryptoclitus, but Elasmosaurus is my favorite plesiosaur. And one of the crocodiles, the crocodile forms that we have here, uh, is Dinosuchus, uh, and so. This crocodiliform is one of the largest crocodiliforms to ever existed, and and also it's found in the United States, uh, and it's related to alligators. And so that's just really cool to see that there was a large uh, relative of alligators uh, that lived during the time of the dinosaurs, especially in the late Cretaceous period, and just the just the big skull and those massive conical teeth like just amazes me i got to see a dinosuchus skull that was in the black hills institute of geological research museum uh even though it was a replica uh just seeing that skull is just awe-inspiring just to see that skull just to see how massive a crocodile like creature that lived during the time of the dinosaurs it's just really 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 cool i love crocodile forms um and Dinosuchus is one of my favorites. I mean, Sarcosuchus is really cool too, uh, but a uh, the largest crocodile crocodilian to ever existed, Prusaurus, is also one of my favorites. But I prefer Dinosuchus a little bit more. Next reptile is Scutosaurus, a Permian uh, reptile, and uh, yeah, just a just an awkward looking uh, creature. Uh, kind of almost looks like it's. Like kind of almost look like it's squatting uh, a lot, you know, on, on four limbs, just squatting down a lot. But like, yeah, just the just the bizarreness of Scutosaurus just looks really, really neat. The armor on the back, the uh, the skull is just so weirdly shaped, and yeah, and just to imagine like what it was during the Permian, uh, just roaming around finding plants to eat, and 
just kind of waddling around. Uh, yeah, it's just such a such a unique uh, reptile. I've always liked Scutosaurus. And uh, my favorite archosaur uh, is uh, Postosuchus. I always like Postosuchus because of like it just kind of reminds me of some of the theropod dinosaurs, you know. But like it's not a theropod dinosaur; it's a type of archosaur, like the pseudocrocodile forms or crocodile forms, you know, the pseudo crocodilas, you know, those types of uh, creatures, and like they're bipedal and uh, they have very short arms. Even though Walking with Dinosaurs version has it on all fours, that's not true at all. And like, yeah, that just uh, just how amazing that skull is, and just how um, like just how you just so cool. I just always like Postosuchus thanks to Walking with Dinosaurs, and yeah, that this thing was so so cool. I always like Postosuchus. Next marine reptile here is Lyoplorodon, one of my favorite plyosaurs, and uh, yeah, it, in Walking with Dinosaurs kind of catapulted that uh, animal to be a very popular uh, plyosaur, uh, along with Chronosaurus and and formerly named Predator X, which is now a form of Pliosaurus. But yeah, that, but Lyoplorodon is one of my favorites, thanks to Walking with Dinosaurs. And just the skull, this looks cool, and has the characteristics of Pliosaurus. So I just, I just love Lyoplorodon. And the last reptile I'll talk about here is Petrolacosaurus. One of the earliest uh, reptiles to ever uh, have existed. It came from the it's from the Carboniferous, and uh, just uh, has the those features of showing it looks like a lizard, but it's not a true lizard. It's just an early reptile, and uh, and it has like the really long legs for speed, and I mean Walking with Monsters uh, did actually uh, showcase this animal uh, in. The Carboniferous Forests of Kansas, and yeah, just just such a just such a cool just such a cool reptile. It's a small reptile. It's not a really large reptile, but yeah, it's just an just an amazing looking reptile. And it would be one of those reptiles that would be kind of sort of like the common ancestor that would actually split uh, the reptile lineage in certain ways that would actually go either basic that would go towards to be the synapsids which are the uh, group of uh, vertebrates that would ultimately become mammals and then you actually have the diapsids uh, that also would turn into archosaurs and dinosaurs and birds and so yeah that's actually really really neat of that there is a common ancestor uh, there, but like Petrolacosaurus, this is just an ancient reptile, uh, and yeah, it's just it's just so cool. It just kind of looks like one of those tree uh, geckos, or like those tree lizards, uh, in a way, thanks to this artist rendition. But I think it would spend a little bit more time in the, on the ground than in say on trees. But yeah, I just love Petrolacosaurus. It's just really really neat. But I want to ask you guys, what's your favorite prehistoric reptiles? Uh, give me a good list. It can, you can give me 10, you can give me 5, you can give me 3, but don't put too much in there. Because uh, otherwise it's going to be too long of comments, <laughs> too long of a comment to actually look into it. But yeah, give me your favorite prehistoric reptiles. And, and I would say exclude pterosaurs. Exclude pterosaurs. So pterosaurs do not count. Uh, in this list, so just because uh, pterosaurs are their own thing, and so give me your favorite prehistoric reptiles, and so put them down in the comments down below. And what do you think of my list uh, of some of the, my favorite reptiles? And so the next episode will be on December fifth, twenty twenty four. So that means no new episode next week, Thursday, on the twenty eighth of November, because on the twenty eighth of November, that is uh, Thanksgiving here in the United States. So it's a it's a big holiday, and so uh, so in two weeks there will be a new uh, Q and A episode. So so make sure you save up those questions for the Q and A episode. Uh, they'll be in two weeks. 
December 5th, 2024. So make sure you get your questions ready for that on December 5th, 2024, like I said. And uh, so you can send me those questions via email. Face, uh, uh, you can send those questions via email, dinochris71 at gmail.com. Or just go to my Facebook page, Prince of Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you should post your questions in the comment section. Please put them in the comment section. Don't put them on Messenger. Messengers are private conversations. So please put your questions on any in the comment section on any Facebook post. And also for YouTubes out there, like the video, subscribe to the channel according to my analytics alert. If you guys are checking out my channel and not subscribed yet, so please feel free to hit that like button because that's how the YouTube algorithm works. The more likes the video gets, the more likely the video gets spread out to people that are interested in dinosaurs, paleontology, prehistoric life, geology in general, and also share the video, share the channel to anybody that is interested in dinosaurs, prehistoric life, paleontology, and geology in general, so please feel free to do so. And also uh, hit that notification bell so that we can get weekly notifications that come, of every video that comes out. And... Uh, and probably on Thanksgiving week, I'll actually post a, um, some uh, some uh, poll questions for you guys in the community tab. So if you go into the community tab, there is going to be some like uh, news updates of like a bit of an episode that's going to come out. And also, I will do some uh, even there's like some fun like news uh, bits that are on there too. And so yeah, so make sure you check out the community tab. I will be pull posting some poll questions uh, throughout the week of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving week. So please uh, check out the community tab. And also for YouTubers out there, feel free to leave your questions in the comments section because I do read them all. Your, your questions do mean a lot on the, on the Q&A episode. So all of you that are sending me questions via email, Facebook, and YouTube, you guys are awesome. You're giving me some great questions for the Q&A episode, so keep up the great work. And also make sure you keep your questions short to the point. You can also follow me on Instagram at dinout.chris.pf. I'll post pretty cool stuff on there. And you can also follow me on threads. It's the same thing at dinout.chris.pf. I'll post pretty cool stuff on there as well. Also, take care of people around you. Notice if you're younger people out there, and it makes a list, and your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you can have a good education. It's very important to have good education. It's with a good education. You're going to get a good job in the future. That's it for now, and I'll see you guys next time. And all of you that are celebrating Thanksgiving here in the United States, uh, have a happy and safe Thanksgiving, and enjoy uh, some time with family, friends, uh, ho however you spent your Thanksgiving. And uh, no. And also be kind to everybody. And uh, like I said, see you guys in two weeks, December 5th, 2024.